the Force One F 100. We got great packaging. This is the Force One F 100. Now this drone is uh, quite a bit of power for somebody who is just getting started. So do kind of learn a little bit outdoors versus indoors. Uh, definitely an outdoors flyer. Let's crack right into the box and see what we got. Now you can get the upgraded package where it does come with the camera and everything, which is cool, uh, but when you're using this thing, the way I do, um, I end up taking off the legs and the prop gear. Now when you first start off, you'll want to start off with flying with the prop gear just to protect the props a little bit more uh, than you'd think you would. Now if you fly around trees, um, the props may get caught on limbs. So you do have that, uh, you want to go to a wide open area for your first run. And you're going to be really excited with Force One. This is a very affordable product. This is actually uh, the third uh, Force One. I had a Ghost, which is very similar. You want to look it up. I'll throw links below. Um, I don't know if you know about Force One. Their customer service is amazing. Um, and that's why I'm showing you this today. Just because of the fact that they are a company that stands behind their products. Brand new, in the box, comes with all the information. As any kind of electronics, what you'll want to do is read the instructions. I know it's cool, but just familiarize yourself with drones if you haven't. And if you're a veteran and you think you know everything, there's always something that you could pick up that you might not remember. So they do package it quite well with some really sturdy styrofoam. Uh, the package design is meant for safety as well as storage. So on this side you have the receiver. It's a simple receiver, but it's really sleek and elegant. It doesn't have a shiny finish. It's just, uh, it's just a very, very matte finish. I'll show you the box one more time. And we'll go back to the styrofoam. So on the bottom is the Force One. Now you got a little tab here. I got two cameras rolling, so. You got a little tab here. To take the tab off though, there is a screw. That's where you throw in four batteries. Uh, I always get good batteries, um, put it in the best batteries you can because you want it to connect. You don't want crappy remote control batteries. Try to get the high powered batteries that are good for cameras and whatnot. Uh, but this is the controller. We get the F100. We got one single screw. Uh, you can take the screw out and leave it or you can put the screw back in. What I like to do is put a little piece of foam in there, uh, then close it just for any kind of safety that if I drop the controller or anything happens that the battery disconnects, uh, what will happen is basically the foam will keep the batteries from coming out. That's just some tricks I learned. I do it in all my controllers. Nothing wrong with Force One. You don't even have to do that. Um, but on some products, I just like to put it in there. Just maybe a, a packing noodle or a little uh, foam piece, just tiny in there. And that should do the trick. Uh, if you want to add security, throw the screw back in. Now you'll notice that it doesn't come with the uh, little things installed. That's because they come in a bag, you put them on, and then you put a screw inside of them and twist it down. You don't just put it on there and leave it on there. They come with little tiny screws that go in the middle. So don't forget to do that, otherwise you'll leave the house flying with just nubs. So for packaging purposes and so they don't get broken, you'll definitely want to install those. So let's flip this box over and we'll see what we got. We got a little QC sticker, quality control, which is really cool that they take pride in their products. Little green sticker on the tape, quality control. And so I'm gonna open up this beauty and show you just how fantastic this is. Now everything's wrapped in plastic. Everything's really secure, wrapped in plastic. The best part about it, look at these. Two 15 minute batteries. You have 30 minutes flying time, plus it comes with a wicked good charger that you could use to charge any three cell, I'm sorry, two cell lipos. These are two cell. Don't let that fool you. These things are going quick. Uh, they are safe in a hard case so you can drop them. Uh, with any lipos, I wouldn't keep them in your hot car. I would dedicate maybe a small cooler or something that you keep it with. 
or a fireproof lipo bag um, for your lipos. I haven't had any problems with their connection. All the Force One drones that I've had that have batteries, their batteries are very high charge. Uh, there's no wire fraying. There's no crappy, shoddy connection. Everything is professionally done, and you'll be really safe with these 15-minute batteries. Now, it does take a little bit of charge. No big deal. Uh, you plug this end in, and you plug... What I do for battery charging is I first plug this in. Now the, what that does is when you plug the battery in for the first time without any power, it'll either show a green light. Now if it's fully charged battery, you'll get a green light just from the power of this. So you could use this as a, hey, is my battery charger full? It's an ingenious idea. Force One, you guys are, are very intelligent. So what I do is every time I charge a battery, I plug this in first and then I plug this into the wall and then this into the charger for the final. I don't know why I do that, that just seems the safest for me. You don't wanna go from here and plug it in and have this as a live plug and then plug it in because if you put it backwards you might screw up the battery or cause a, a short or anything. So what you'll do is plug this in first, you'll see if a green light comes on. If a green light comes on, your battery's charged. If it doesn't come on, the battery's not charged. You connect this, then you connect this to this and you let it charge for as long as it needs to. Now, um, the next thing you get is a little GoPro holder. This thing is pretty cool. And again, everything is wrapped up individually. So you're really shown that everything is taken care of down to every little scratch and plastic. Don't lose this uh, little piece of foam, I guess. Maybe a buffer. I never used it, to be honest. I don't, don't really need those. But it's just got a simple latch. It locks up underneath the drone and it locks up underneath and there's a little twist at the bottom uh, this opens up you put your little camera in and when it flies around it's just a really nice thing to have now let's get to uh, we do have some prop cards we have two sets of props which to be honest um, I personally don't go through props as fast as little tiny drones do so that's the benefit of a larger drone is the props now the more stable and less damage you have to the props, the smoother your bird will be. So you'll notice over time if your bird is wiggling and everything's wobbling and you're just not getting the right balance after you set your trims, replace the props to new props. They'll fly like brand new. These are very affordable uh, to replace. And I've had one of these since November. Um, and then it finally failed, which is why I got this. Of course, one, you guys are awesome. Um, and it does come with some landing legs. Now, personally, I have evolved to the point where I don't fly with the guards. Uh, everything in the instructions teaches you how to put it together. But if you're real anxious, you could just get going, charge it up. So you pull off these things in the arms, and you'll notice that even though it comes with legs, that's to protect the camera that just snaps in like this, right? So this drone is very versatile and with the legs, it will sit up higher to keep your camera secure. Now, if you wanna fly and not use the camera, what I would do is just take this part off, don't put the legs on it, and see these little stands they have? These little legs, these triangle legs are screwed in and they are perfect for holding the holding it up and it gives plenty of air for the batteries uh, the batteries go in the back like that and they don't lock or anything they don't come out it's just a very just a very secure slide so they really planned everything out with this drone the motors are brushless motors they're excellent um, under the hood they make it really easy to pop open the lid and to see the components inside. Now everything you have inside from the light to everything is all plug and play. So you just, when you get your drone, I think it's a good idea with anything, is when you open it up, just to check all the connections, make sure they didn't uh, unseat themselves in the shipping process. And that's basically what you do. So now we have this in here. We have the lid. Looks really nice. 
Uh, the cord isn't too long. Will it get caught up on the props? They really did think about everything about this drone. The light is so bright that you could see in the direction it's going, so you know where it is and determine to where you are if you're flying at night. White for the front and the big bright one in the front. So when it's up in the sky, you could just see that flying like a UFO. Now this will fit any kind of small action cam, GoPro cam, anything like that. Uh, the prop guards are excellent. Don't forget the screws. And there is a little, which I gotta find, the little packet. Let's get the controller set up. So you have a little um, prop wash locker tool for basically Taking off and putting on props and it helps. Here's a screwdriver for various things, mainly the usage is for the controller. Here is the controller nubs that do go on the controller with the designated screws. So everything is compartmentalized out. You do have to put a couple things together, but once you do connect the battery and charge up a battery, you're gonna have plenty of time to do all this stuff. I'd recommend finding a nice space to separate like I did. That way you can make sure you have everything and get familiar. If you're already into drones and you already know kind of what's going on and what you're doing, then you really don't uh, don't need to really do that. So let's get started with a little bit of screwdriver battery removal on the back plate. Again, another quality sticker. I'm just going to peel that off. I probably don't need to do that right now, but I'm just taking the time. I got all the time in the world while the battery's charging, right? And these are Alkaline Plus. These have always done well for me in RC, um, you know, receivers and whatnot, transmitters, controllers, whatever you want to call them. Just gonna make sure they're seated and they're right. And again, you could put a piece of foam in there, but you really don't need to. They're not going anywhere. It's got a really good secure. If you want, you can put the screw back on there. I just don't. In case there's ever kind of mishap, I want to be able to get in there really quick. I've never had to happen. It's just a general rule. I do. Uh, this is the Force 100 controller. We have the sticks. Oh, that's to turn on. Let's not do that yet. I'm going to go ahead and dump this out here. And we're going to use the same screwdriver and these little things. They are a little hex inside. Not a problem. Put that on there. Put that on there. Now, what you'll want to do is after you put this on here, you drop the screws in. One screw. Two screws. Now, I would give it a Titan, but you're not holding down a bridge or breaking, you know, a Ford or whatever. Here, let's uh, get that. That's a little tricky. There we go. You probably hold it in one direction while you turn it. You don't need to really tighten it too far, just enough to where it gets snug and doesn't come up. Now, if you lose the if you lose the screw, make sure you retrieve it back. Okay, screw is back. This one I will hold and just give it a tighten. That's all you gotta do. Tight, tight, tight. All right. So we tighten that down. And that's not going anywhere. Maybe it is. Maybe I need to tighten it better. Use your judgment. Let's put it down on the table. All right, that. And a little bit more. There's a little bit of prep. But you'll be excited that you do it once and once well. Give it a little tug. Make sure they don't come up. Give it a little tug. Make sure they don't come up. And there you go. And they're just short enough. They're really nice. Let's see if I can get a little bit more light on that. It's just a really nice controller. So here we have that. I'm not gonna put these on yet because I wanna bind the controller first, right? So we're indoors. I don't wanna hurt myself. We're not doing anything else. We're just gonna make sure it talks to each other, right? So let's see if we can give it a go. So I'll put this in here. It's got a plus and minus. There's only one way it can go and it's this way. The square end in the one side, the red and the black. So you'll see. It's pretty science, but it only goes one way. Just make sure you match them up. And you plug it in. And you put it down so it calibrates stable. And you turn on the receiver. And we'll see if it talks to each other. Now, it may not talk to each other the first time. Let's see. Okay, let's try this again. Turn it off. Unplug it. 
We'll plug it in. We'll press and hold the red button and we'll turn it on for the first time. I'm gonna let go. Now it should bind. That should be bound. If I press this button, you should hear the motor spin. And the motor spin. Now it's not gonna go anywhere because you don't have props. And this is why you do this without the propellers on. It's because you're just testing the equipment. You don't want to test the equipment indoors. You could safely pick it up. You're not gonna get hurt and everything, even though the motors are still going. To stop the motors, you press the red button and hold it when the controller is in the down position. They are nice, mean motors. They're very heavy. You don't want to get your fingers anywhere near it. Now, that's all we're doing for connecting. We just wanted to make sure it connects. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna turn it off and we're gonna unplug the batteries. Now, when they send you the batteries, they are sent with a little charge. You really don't want to fly directly off the charge that you get. I mean, you can, but with me and batteries, um, the, I think they're charged just enough to, you know, get a good connection and make sure you're good to go. Now, uh, while your batteries are charging, you can go ahead and uh, definitely do some other things. You can install the prop guards that do go on the bottom with some screws, and they show you the instruction manual. They clip on, and it does secure the props from getting hit. And if you bump into something, there might be a slight give. Uh, definitely is going to be good for the learning. Does add a little weight, however but not much if you're just um, just starting out. You definitely want to use the propeller uh, guards as well. I'm not going to use that. I'm not going to use the camera. I'm not going to use the legs. I'm going to install a set of propellers. Now these propellers are lock and load, meaning there's no screw or anything. They all go their own way. Actually, two go one way and two go the other way. And they are marked clearly with A1 and B. So you have the A's and you have the B's. Now A1 and B1, A1, it's just the front side and B2. So it'll show you on the propeller, I gotta get a better camera angle on this, but it'll show you on the propeller right next to the little nub part is a letter and the way it goes. Uh, front propeller, B is the right, and opposite B is the left. So if I have it forward facing, B goes here. This is B, right? And this is also B, which makes this A and A. So make sure to check which way your propellers go. It does matter. It's on page six of the manual. A little bit more information about battery. Um, again, here's a more detailed uh, explanation of propellers installation, of which way it goes, how to install the propeller guards, how to install the high landing gear to protect the camera, how to install your battery, um, how to calibrate your transmitter. That prop guard holds one of these little uh, spokes, right? And then you just, you make sure you're level. Let me, let me make sure I'm level. Then we just spin it the direction it asks to be spin. And it goes all the way down to lock. And you don't need to do it too tight, but it's just real snug. And the same with this one. It tells you which way it goes. It goes the other way. So we go, okay, we'll go the other way. So you hold the prop and you go the other way. Do this like four times. Or maybe it goes this way. Let's see. There you go. Uh, one of these ways, right? You'll get the idea. So that's on. Here's another. And it goes this way, I see it goes opposite the way it turns. So there's a diagram that says the prop's gonna turn this way, so you gotta lock it down the opposite way. Otherwise, the propellers would fly off. So you don't have to do it too tight. Just give it a nice, good, snug tick. And this is when it starts to get dangerous. You want to make sure that you don't have a battery plugged in at this point. You always want to keep batteries separate from the drone. Now, I've never had a problem with it because of the arming accounts that uh, Force One has enabled with the red button for arm. Uh, you do have other buttons as well as a flip and a mode change to change uh, different ways that uh, if you go from mode, you can set how much angle and pitch and roll you get. First mode is a little bit, second mode is a little bit more. So you, you want to check out some of the features. And it just got little snaps on top. And it just stays on real tight when it's flying. This thing is a quick zippy flyer. And I think for the price, you're not going to find a better drone. You're looking for a first drone a nice good sized drone that you might want to consider flying for fun or you might want to consider 
getting into photography. It's a good way to get your legs wet in a good solid drone that's very responsive, very controlled, has a really nice distance. I can't say anything more great about this. Um, I am a personal user of this drone. I have had a couple. Uh, they have seen their demise, but since I got a new one, I figured I'd give a chance to uh, do a quick unboxing and tell you a little bit about this product. So, a couple sets of propellers, a couple batteries, full awesome secure chargers, a good solid antenna radio, a very sturdy case, a good way to check everything. They really thought about everything. Bright light, very secure. Uh, I can't say too much more about it. Force One drone, you guys. This is really cool. Force One. Everybody, Chris Wicks. I'm going to get to flying, get to charging, putting this all together. You guys take it easy. Rock on.